Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. What you just saw there was either somebody's really lucky day or really unlucky day, depending on whether that person was a target behind the door or the shooter in front of it. That was a 300 blackout Barnes Vortex bullet stopped cold by that car door. And if you believe a laboratory ballistic simulations, that's not supposed to happen. But it's a perfect example of how the real world can behave much differently than in a controlled ballistics test. I actually shot that car door two other times and both times the bullet did fully penetrate as you would expect. And I was able to capture the bullets in the water jugs behind the car door. And both of those bullets behave very differently from each other. So this gives us three very different results of the real world showing how much it differs from a laboratory. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Barnes Vortex 110 grain 300 blackout is not a repurposed 30 caliber bullet from another caliber. They made this specifically for blackout velocities. The bullet's shape and length are also optimized for feeding out of standard 5.56 mags. Though I prefer to do this test with ballistics gel, that's just not a big enough target for me, considering that the bullet might not travel straight after leaving the door. I recovered this from the third jug, and man, that is practically perfect expansion. It's not a perfect X like you see stamped on the back of the bullet, but that is full expansion of the pedals. And each of those pedals is very sharp. Clearly, this is what Barnes had in mind when they designed this bullet. Yes. So clearly I saw the new hole in the door, but since I didn't hit any of the water jugs, I just thought my angle was off and I missed the jugs behind the door completely because I couldn't imagine that the bullet did not penetrate. <laughs> It's hard to tell, but the bullet actually curved downward after it hit the jugs. So it's at the very bottom of the last jug. This round did not expand. You can see that the hollow point is actually smashed in on one side. And here's a piece of sheet metal that I recovered in the last jug. Here's where it came from it actually punched through the sheet metal carrying this little plug along for the ride. That's probably why it didn't travel in a straight line once it hit the water. So I think the plastic tip was fully shed before it hit the second steel panel and that's why it deformed. Let's check out the door and see why. The top three holes were from this test. Upper left was the first shot, upper right was the second shot, and the one in the lower middle was the third shot. On the back side, something's missing. It finally dawns on me that that bullet from the second shot might not have exited, and it didn't hit the door handle. Oh. It looks like one didn't even make it through. Sometimes my genius even astonishes me. But that didn't keep me from counting the holes at the front of the door again. So here's why I did this three times, to show you the variations that can happen in the real world. This is the exit of the first bullet that expanded perfectly once it hit the water jugs and penetrated three water jugs fully. That's just a hole that's in the car. That's not actually any kind of shot there. But here is where the second, the, the third round penetrated here and ref deflected off of here and probably spun around. It probably took that piece of, of sheet metal from here it looks like, it looks like it belongs right there and spun around and it did not expand. And then the third bullet actually entered back here and went through all of this hardware and got stuck behind this bracket. I tried, there's no way I'm gonna be getting at that bullet. But the point is whenever you hear people say, 
oh, bullets will just cut through a car door like butter. Well, this shows you that it's not always the case. And in this case, the bad guy would have gotten away. Unless, of course, you shoot those three shots in rapid succession, then he's having a really bad day. But I, I could not have imagined a more interesting video when I first thought of doing this. I could not have planned it better to have one shot that performed perfectly after passing through two steel panels of that car door, having another one not making it through at all, having a third bullet penetrate but not expand. That's the full range of possibilities for any kind of bullet. And, and we got that just in three pulls of the trigger. Is that the, uh, an indictment of the Barnes Vortex load for the 300 blackout? Absolutely not. There is not a load or a bullet that's been more researched, more tested than this load, than the Barnes Vortex, the, the Tactex bullet for the 300 blackout. And so that's about as the best performance that you're going to get in something that's supposed to expand. So if you're, if you're in a situation where barrier performance is important to you, this is the load you're gonna wanna get. If you wanna learn more about the Barnes Vortex and 300 Blackout, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log into YouTube and click the like button. Now more than ever, YouTube needs to know that you like firearms-oriented programming. Be sure to click up here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool tests I've actually already done with the Barnes Vortex and 300 Blackout. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.